I want to find out a little bit about why this topic was so popular as some of the others have been as well. Uh, first of all, have you attended a Lunch and Learn before? See how many repeat offenders we have here. Oh, wow, we have actually a really big percentage of you folks that have not attended these. Uh, one of the reasons we do these Lunch and Learns is we, we looked at what SolidWorks puts out every year and we said, there's no way we could teach our entire customer base all the changes that have happened throughout a year and get them up to date to be using them. So we've decided to put together a twice a month lunch program where we pick a topic and we provide you with as much input on that topic as we're able to. And it's it's kind of in the, the spirit of training. You know, I, I go through just as you would uh, in a training class and try to dig and see what works and what doesn't work. And, and you know, everything doesn't exactly work perfectly for me. So I want to show you a realistic look of, hey, here's what we have for drawing view creation and options. Here are the things I use. Here are the things I don't use. So I welcome the 58% the of you uh, that uh, this is your first lunch and learn. I appreciate that. Now, a uh, little bit about what, what maybe you're looking to get out of this webinar. You know, do you want to just learn about different view types? Uh, you're just kind of looking at it as a refresher on view creation. Okay, do you need to know a little bit more about the options and manipulating view creation? Or you're not really sure, you're just here to kind of see what, what goes on. Okay, it's a pretty good cross-section here. We'll give it one more second. I've got to share those results. We have a pretty good cross-section about what we're going to cover today. Uh, we do have quite a bit in the arena of how do I manipulate the view after I've created it. Everything from hiding and showing lines to changing colors and layers, moving, copying, pasting, hiding behind planes. I mean, we have all sorts of stuff that we're going to try to fit into this, this hour session today. And uh, to finish this off, I just want to find out, here's some of those view types uh, that are kind of, hmm, I would say, not used very often. And I may have put this so you can only select one, but, you know, are you using any of those if there's one that you use? Pre so some of you folks are actually using predefined part cutaways, okay, crop views. All right, well, we're going to talk about each and one, every one of those. I'm going to go ahead and close that and share the results here. Um, we'll talk about these as we, as we go along. So off to my PowerPoint. Um, agenda for today. We want to talk about standard views. We want to cover what it means to be a derived view in SOLIDWORKS. And we want to take a look at the different section view types. Um, we all know the standard section view, but, but doing aligned section views or part cutaways or assembly cutaways, you know, some of those things are, I'd say, a little bit more non-traditional. So I want to show you how we might accomplish uh, some of those things uh, in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, we want to go over the view properties dialog uh, so that we can take a look at the options that are contained within there and how those might affect you. Talk real briefly on first angle versus third angle projection. We get a lot of calls from folks who say just the drawing views aren't showing up the way they would expect. Just wanted to point out this option. And then as we talked about uh, the ability to manipulate drawing views, we're going to go over moving drawing views, aligning drawing views, uh, the 3D drawing view command, rotating, copying. I put hiding and showing on there, but that's really hiding and showing a lot of things from parts bodies, lines, views, we're going to cover all that. We're going to talk briefly about display states and how that's used in drawing. And then drawing view display, which is like line format, uh, line color, those types of commands uh, within the system. So let's just start off real quick with our standard views. There's really only uh, five views that you would consider uh, are standard. Um, within the system. And when we say standard, it means it's not uh, not reliant on another view for its creation. So these are all 
uh, views that can be created without having any input from any other view. We all know about the standard three view, the model view. Uh, I'm going to go through and create a relative view, but we want to talk about things like predefined views and empty views as well. So let's jump to SOLIDWORKS for a moment. Standard three view. A couple things with standard three view, and I've went ahead and, and added all of the view types to my view layout toolbar. For those of you who don't uh, know how to do that, uh, if we go to our tools customize and I go to drawing, I'm sorry, under commands, under drawing, here are the different types of views. Uh, there was a few of them that weren't on here. I think uh, predefined view wasn't on here, alternate position wasn't on here. Uh, so you may want to just add those by default to that toolbar, at least so you have access uh, to what you're looking for. Now, a standard three view is going to give you your standard three views based upon your projection type that's set within the software, and we're going to cover that a little bit later. It does require you to browse to a particular component, and it will automatically give you the top front right, or what is the standard three views based upon the projection type. Now there is some uh, other things with standard three view that you want, might want to be aware of because standard three view is actually the default type uh, when you drag and drop a component uh, from inside of, uh, of SolidWorks. So let's just open up this component for a moment. And if I wanted to tile the windows, and I'm going to just uh, minimize a bunch of these, get them out of our way for a moment. If you were to drag and drop from Explorer, or you were to drag and drop from uh, two windows that are existing, the default method for view creation is standard three view. So notice I didn't have to invoke the command. That's something that's been there for a long time, uh, but most folks uh, may or may not remember uh, that that is there. So your standard three view is is pretty uh, pretty much understood, but the biggest thing I want to point out there is the type and orientation of the views. Remember, the first and third angle projection, which we're going to cover in a little bit, uh, is going to affect that. So model views. I want to talk a little bit about model view uh, because model view is really going back to the individual model and deciding how I can extract the views that are stored within that model. Now if I if I go ahead and uh, yeah, let's use that DME plate once again. If I go back to that plate, we're used to being able to manipulate the views uh, using my view orientation, but that doesn't show me what views I have saved uh, that are extra that I've saved as on my own. I can use my uh, arrows to also uh, manipulate different types of views. But the, the part that people forget about is the space bar, which is titled View Orientation. These are really any of the orthogonal views that are saved within the, the part file itself. Now, you, you all you have your standard top, front, right, isometric, trimetric, and diametric views. When I go to a drawing, which I had, uh, yeah, I got too much open here. Let's see. Well, let's use our R key to find my empty drawing. I thought I had an empty drawing. Guess not. Okay. We'll create a new drawing here. Now, if I want to create a model view, very simply, when I select model view, uh, what it's going to do. Uh, is ask me for the document I want to create the model view of. If there's an image stored with it, it will show you in the model view creation. And there's an option here to start this command when creating a new drawing. Uh, this, when I'm showing the software, I like to have it start. But sometimes this becomes a point of contention for a lot of folks. They don't like model view launching every time I create a, uh, a drawing. There's also an option for cosmetic thread display in here, high versus draft quality. When you create views, it tries to create the cosmetic threads in the quality that you predefine. Uh, in other words, the cosmetic threads are accurate to size, location, as far as where they overlap, um, 
but there is some calculations that will set that to a higher quality to make sure those are 100% accurate. Now that actually happens in the background uh, when you uh, create a drawing before it actually gets saved it will do some conversion of that. So if I select model view I can go to the next screen I can pick the configuration of the model that I want I can decide which view that I want notice there's also an option in here for creating multiple views so if I want a top a right and an isometric all in this drawing I can set that ahead of time but what I really want to point out here is that all of this command is doing is going back to the file and giving you any of the views that are contained in the view orientation dialog it's adding one more to that which is what we call the current model view okay I'm just going to turn that on uh, that's wherever the model was rotated the last time you saved it it will be saved in here we're going to talk about display states a little bit later that's for uh, viewing uh, how the part or assembly is going to look uh, from a display perspective is it hidden line visible hidden removed is there transparency those types of things there's the auto start projected view another thing that really becomes uh, annoying to me a lot of times is I'm placing a view and then projected view automatically starts in this case I'm actually going to turn that right off what is my display style for these views do I want them shaded what is the scale for these views and you can create your own custom scaling in here if it's not listed in the list you can select user to find and type in your own value now dimension type this is one folks get tripped up on and the reason I'm bringing up all these properties there really are a lot a lot of these are the same for each type but what a projected uh, dimension is versus a true dimension uh, projected is really taking let's say the part is rotated at an angle it's take if you're if you're measuring the edge or placing a dimension in the edge it's what is the length of that line as it looks to the user and is projected normal to the user so that's uh, you know it, the dimensions can be very different than the real dimensions which we call the true dimensions I can show you a little bit of that. Somebody's asking if this is SolidWorks 2012. This is SolidWorks 2012. It was uh, released in uh, October, November time frame. So if I go ahead and select this now, uh, you can see that it automatically created the views, including the view that I had my last save view at the top. And now it asks me uh, if I want to take drawing view four and drawing view five and set them to true dimensions versus projected uh, and and what it does it will change those for those particular view types now I can ch select any of the view types and modify any of those properties okay you can see if I select the standard views they are set to projected the other two are set to true so that's your model view command but one other thing uh, with model view here I'm gonna just pop back to the part you can with your spacebar save your own views okay uh, when I want to save my own view I put the part where I want it let's say I wanted some sort of isometric here I hit my spacebar and you're gonna see an option in there for new view I'm gonna call this uh, Kevin view Kevin view one okay now when I go to the drawing and decide I want to uh, create a sorry here a view of that and I'm just going to remove one of these uh, I can go ahead and insert my model view and one of the things that I will be able to select is Kevin view it will be listed in the in the views option so you are able to uh, create your own view type and set it to true versus projected dimensions and so on uh, that is available now another neat thing about model views that I like uh, when you create them all separately like this is a model view allows you to switch between the view types so I'm coming up here and I, I'm in a particular view which is the last model view but I might want to make this my left view or make this my top view or make this my right view Okay, 
a model view allows you to switch between them, including allowing me to pick any of the custom views that I've created and place them near my drawing as well. So model view allows you some flexibility. Now one of my slides is to cover what we call 3D drawing views. Now in, the, in SolidWorks, we're used to the whole idea that we have some sort of alignment between drawings. We're going to talk further about that. But sometimes you get a view where it just ain't quite right. And, and when you have a model view that's kind of standalone like that, there's a command in the view toolbar at the very top called 3D Drawing View. Now this has been available for quite some time. And if I pick a view, I can select 3D Drawing View. And what it allows me to do is take something that's literally two dimensions and, uh, and rotate it in space. Okay. Now if I like the position that the view is in, I can actually say OK to the orientation. And it's going to ask me, the orientation has been changed. Do you want all the dependent views to change? And I just wanted to show you that the views that were created off of the original, the front view, will also modify. Now, this is obviously an undesired result in this case. We still want this to be a front view. I want those to update. But when you have a standalone like an isometric and you're really trying to get a nice view in here, I can grab that 3D drawing view. And notice there's the ability to zoom to area, zoom to fit. These are more just to kind of visualize the view. But if you find that you want a different view, maybe a little bit more of a flatter angle, you can go ahead and say OK, and it actually saves that as that view. And you don't have to go back to the model and do further updating of, of what you're looking for. So model view, in my opinion, gives you really the most versatility uh, for creating drawing views. Now, projected views. Uh, projected views uh, is what we use to roll off orthogonal views. So if I want a left view, I have to select the initial view, and it can figure out what all the other uh, orthogonal views are going to be, no matter what quadrant uh, we're pulling this thing off. A little note I had on that, uh, you're always going to get the alignment. Notice if I'm coming up here to the isometric, I have the alignment, or the top view, I have the alignment. If you want to break that alignment at any point, while the preview is still going on, you hold down control on your keyboard, and you're able to place that view wherever you like. No matter whether it's an isometric or a standard orthogonal view, uh, you can roll those off. As far as the options are concerned, uh, there are no uh, really crazy options in here. You do have the ability to add arrows uh, for the projected view. So if you wanted the labels on here, we could put labels on here so it shows uh, view AA and how it's projected across the line. But that, that's not used that often. Uh, and the rest of this is pretty standard. Okay, I'm just going to uh, delete some of my views here. Before I delete them, I think it's important to also recognize uh, that the icon for the drawing views is going to tell you how the view is created. So, and whether or not SolidWorks is doing it in the background or whether we're doing it is, is uh, irrelevant in this case. But you can see when I created the initial view, the software went through and created a model view but it used projected view to create the other two. Even though I used the model view command to create it, it creates the initial view with that, but it projects the others. So a real nice, easy way to see what's happened and how it's created is just to kind of look through uh, the tree here. Auxiliary views are, are pretty easy. An auxiliary view, and this is not really a perfect one to, to do here, uh, allows you to pick a reference edge. Uh, to basically unfold that part from that edge 90 degrees uh, so you can create an auxiliary. It does place the line in there, and it gives you the view creation information as well. The rest of the options are, again, very, very standard. I want to skip over section for a moment. Uh, detail views. When I select detail view, uh, it automatically pops on my circle command. However, I want to point out in this particular command, if you do not want a circle, 
or do not want a circular profile, all you need to do is create the sketch ahead of time. So if you want a detail view that's going to be rectangular, okay, there's my detail. I make sure it's highlighted in green. I know it's highlighted, and now I can select my detail view and the resulting detail. Okay. Uh, now, <laughs> this is another important note and something they've changed. Notice how my detail view did swap to a, to a circle. Um, we have options that control how the detail view looks, uh, and one of those options uh, actually sets it to a standard, which the standard in this case is, is a circle, and I can't select my profile. However, uh, of the other style options, I do have the ability to set that back to a rectangle, and that will set my my view also as a rectangle, and the label will still be on uh, the uh, the detail here. Now, how do I change a sketch for a detail view once it's been created? Now, you you really have to do a couple things. You can either right click on the detail view. There's an option to edit sketch. Notice, notice there's also an option to jump to detail view. So if this is on another sheet, it will take you to that other sheet. But where I most often go is I go right to the feature tree because under the detail view, you're going to see a detail circle. Uh, it's really a sketch. I wish it used the sketch icon, but if I right-click on it, I can edit sketch and maybe modify uh, what it is that I'm using. In this case, maybe I want to come in and uh, reestablish a circle uh, for my detail. And once I exit out, uh, that will be used as my detail. Okay, a couple other things within detail. Uh, full outline will give you the same circle as an outline to the view. What's uh, What I don't like about the full outline is any wasted space in the circle is going to show up in this view, whereas if you turn it off, SolidWorks kind of centers up uh, the geometry within the view. Uh, if you have cross hatching, on the view that you're creating a detail of, this will actually scale the crosshatch. And the rest of the document options in here is pretty, uh, pretty much standard. Uh, under styles, uh, a couple things if you do with leader. Okay, that should uh, create a leader in here for the note. Uh, if I want to do connected, this will actually connect the detail with the actual detail circle. Okay, so you can see exactly where that came from. Uh, what else we got in here? No leader, broken circle. Okay, that's not going to give you the full outline of the circle. Okay, so it's pretty uh, pretty simple to do your section views. Let's use a different example for a broken out section. Let's see what we got on here. So let's say I wanted to break out in uh, view down to the depth, uh, midway through this nozzle here to be able to dimension something. A broken out section allows me to expose the inside of a model, as it says with the note here. So what I need to do is draw what it is I'm using to expose that. And a lot of times you use a spline but can, you can use uh, other geometry to do this. I'm going to just uh, draw my enclosed profile of the area that I want to expose. Under my view layout, we can use our broken out section. Okay, We can tell it to auto hatch. And when we say OK to this, uh, our last choice we really need is to figure out what the depth of that broken out section is going to be. So if I turn on preview, uh, the default depth in this case is 0.25, but maybe I want it to be a depth to a certain point. Let's see if I can find something that's useful here. Maybe to the center of that circle. And let's see. That should uh, I should be able to to see my broken out section here, and it 
needs to rebuild. And it doesn't want to show. So let's see. Let's see here why it doesn't want to show. Just want to try this again. So that uh, broken out section. Hmm. Now you'll notice uh, the the line, the geometry here. Uh, notice this yellow. It's kind of hard to make out in the go-to webinar, uh, but this actually shows us the depth uh, window or the the where it's looking for for depth. So you can actually, and I should be able to put a negative number in here, which should go the other direction. So if I go minus 0.5, oh, it's not. It won't even let me do that. Hmm. I want to go the other direction, but this does not allow me to. So here's something to to be aware of. Uh, let's see if I can just at least select some geometry to get us down there. Okay, so that did it. So I had to select some geometry, but you can see now I'm able to get the broken out section with the automatic cross hatch hatching. Um, if you were to manipulate that uh, broken out section view, if you click on any of the faces created by the broken out section, there you can delete it, you can edit how it was defined and or edit the sketch. Also, you have control over the cross hatching uh, information if it's coming from the material. If not, uh, you can turn this off and actually uh, change your own cross hatching uh, for this within that broken out section. Now in the feature tree for a broken out section, okay, sheet one here, uh, you're going to see, this is drawing view one, I believe, okay, you're going to see features underneath the, the drawing view, and you can see the second one's even there, and you can right click on those uh, to get to the drawing view section as well. Uh, broken views. Let's go ahead in here. I got. Yeah, let's use this one. Okay. If I wanted to break a view, very simple. Uh, select your break view, the view you want to break. Uh, tell it uh, whether you're using a vertical or a horizontal break, and what the gap size is. Also, what the break line style is, and you can see those. You know, straight style, curved cut zigzags and small zigzags are your options. So let's do a curved cut and let's say I wanted to cut it here and cut it all the way at the end. It's automatically going to uh, cut that view and break it up for me. Now you can select on the uh, break view information and actually switch uh, the type automatically. If you wanted to unbreak the view, just right click on it, you're going to see an option to unbreak as well. Okay. Uh, some very stip simple, uh, simple stuff there. Uh, crop views. Crop views is, is kind of like a broken out section, except you're just, uh, you're not going to a depth. So if I wanted to crop this view only to see what's within this circle, Okay, go to my view layout, select my crop view, and now I'm only seeing what's geometry-wise what's in that circle. Okay, uh, one of the others that's that's kind of uh, new to a lot of folks is this whole idea of a relative view. You know, sometimes uh, sometimes the relative view allows you to create views that you can't get elsewhere. Or are harder to get. So if I select relative view, let's come in here, and what it allows me to do is to use face selection, face or plane selection, to give me my orientation. So if I had a face at, a, at an angle, which this particular model, uh, don't, yeah, we can use this. So if I wanted to look directly at that face, Okay, and this is going to be my right-hand face. 
Okay, so we're going to look normal to that, and that's going to be my right-hand side. This will create a view that does exactly that. Now we're looking, if I zoom into that uh, retaining clip, I'm looking directly at that face with it oriented properly to that right-hand side. Okay, uh, This view type shows up in the feature tree uh, with a different icon. Just so you are aware, let me uh, get out of there. So you can see that it actually shows up as a relative view. If you right click on it, um, I don't see any option there for modifying it. Let's see what's up here. Edit feature. Okay, it just takes you to the drawing view. I don't know if there is a way to modify these once they've been placed. You may have to create another relative view. That seems kind of silly, but uh, that's what I'm seeing right at this point. Okay, uh, we're going to skip over alternate position just for a moment. Uh, talked about Talking about predefined and empty views. Uh, predefined views are, are awesome. Uh, I recommend you folks set up predefined views on your templates. So I would come in here and let's actually stop this. We'll create a new drawing. And predefined views allows you to set up your templates so that they're going to automatically use a standard set of view types uh, in them. So if I select predefined view, I can place the first view in here. And notice it brings up the drawing view dialog without the ability to actually select a component in this case. So I can tell the software, you know what, I want uh, you know, a front view. Okay, and I need that to be solid. And here's the scale. And I want to use projected or true dimensions. Okay, when I accept that, it creates a placeholder for that drawing view. What's nice is I can now project other views off of that. So I use my projective view command to maybe create that and an isometric. And I actually save this as a template that would automatically give me my top front right isometric. Now how do I use the template? Well, we would do a file new and select our template like we typically would. But if I have a component, uh, let's see here. Go through my recents here. Let's let's grab a component here, and I wanted to use that uh, on that drawing. Okay, all I have to do is drag it onto the sheet, and it automatically populates all of those views because they were predefined. Now, another way to do that is to right-click within a view, and there's an option to insert the model. Now, keeping in mind that these three views are related because they were projected, but if I select Insert Model, I have the ability uh, to select the model to use, and it will place it in. Okay, so that's what uh, what we use predefined views for. Uh, it's kind of a nice way of uh, automating that. Now, empty views and mine isn't actually on there, but the insert drawing view empty, I use a lot for positioning sketch geometry. Let's just say you needed to create some uh, lines over the top of this, uh, this existing drawing that show you, you know, something over the top of the plate, let's say, just some sort of sketch. The hard part you have in SOLIDWORKS is if you don't create a view to tie it to, when you go to move things, like moving views, some, you know, you've probably all had this. Some things are tied to one view, some things are tied to another. So we need to create these empty views as a way of storing the information that we're sketching, as if it was a view so I can move it all together. Now, there's some techniques for this, and you kind of see I ran into an issue with that. What you want to do is you want to make sure the software always knows right now that I'm working on this particular view. What I can do is what we call uh, locking the view focus. 
if I lock the view focus, I can still place it right over the top of that view where it exists, and now I can continue to draw like you would expect. I can uh, lay right over the top here. Maybe go to all four quadrants and corner to corner. And everything that I sketched should be related to that particular drawing view. If I can move it here. Okay, let's move this one. <laughs> so now the reason it's snapping is because of relations, but uh, if I didn't have the relations to the center points, this now this sketch now becomes almost like its own view that you can move and manipulate around. So empty views are really nice. You can put notes in empty views. Really all of your notes on a drawing can be placed in an empty view. If you lock the view focus, you can put all your notes on there. That way you can move all your notes together and they can stay relative to each other if you wanted to slide them around. Um, empty views are phenomenal for making things more predictable uh, within the software. Okay, So there's a, a quick look, uh, look at some, some view types. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, and we are going to run out of time with the way things are going here. It's a lot to cover. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, uh, I think everyone's comfortable probably with section views. I want to talk about align sections, and I want to talk about a couple different options as it relates to section views. Uh, I asked the question about people doing part cutaways or assembly cutaway views. Um, those are a little bit different. So let's, uh, let's look at align sections for a moment. This is a, a good model uh, to do that on. So let's use uh, one of my other standard views here. I'm just going to roll off a projected so I have the view that I'm looking for. Now on a line section view, uh, the, the only thing we have to do ahead of time, uh, uh, different than a regular section view, is we're going to have to draw our sketch ahead of time. So in an aligned section view, what it does is the orientation in which it's presenting you the actual section information changes as you uh, are looking at the section line. So let me just show you that. Let's create this here, and then we'll show you. We can select everything. Select uh, all the uh, the pieces of the section, and we'll create our align section view. Now you'll notice that the section view is actually longer than the view that I was cutting. That's because it's like this first section, whatever distance that is, it's the camera is looking normal to that section line, and as as it's continuing along the section, it's presenting you with a look normal to this as well. Notice we can see uh, the holes that are in the back here um, because we're looking straight in this direction. And you know, in the end, we're looking normal to the line here. So it's almost like taking that line, whatever the section looks like at that line, and flattening it out. Okay? And you're still looking straight at the line for the section. Uh, a neat little way of, of doing that. But what if I wanted to create an, a section view in an isometric? Let's uh, open up this part just for a moment. And how would I go about uh, creating that section view? Let me go to my, uh, let's see here, where is it? We'll use this one for an example. I want to create a section view on this particular part, and we'll show this with assemblies as well. Well, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a configuration. I'm going to call this section. And in this configuration, you're going to create your own cutaway. So I'm going to do something like this and maybe uh, go hidden visible so I know exactly where I want to cut this thing. And let's cut it away from the center of one of those all the way out to the outside, and we'll do 
a physical cut through all for these. Now, the result we're going to use on the drawing. Okay? So we have our default without the cut and our section with the cut. Now, if we go back to, oh, let's just place a new sheet here. And we want to place an isometric view. I'd probably use model view to go ahead and do that. And we'll place an isometric somewhere in here. Uh, I have a choice between which configuration at the view creation that I want. Uh, and that configuration is going to give me a, a cutaway of the parts that I'm looking for. Uh, the only thing, and we'll discuss in the next Lunch and Learn, is you're going to want to come in and apply some area hatch and fill uh, to the cutaway locations uh, and change the scaling of those as well to accommodate uh, what's, what it is you're looking at. But there's a part cutaway. Now, how do I get an assembly cutaway? Uh, let's take uh, this one here. Oh, sorry, I'm looking for something a little better. We'll do this one. If I want an assembly cutaway, it's a little bit different. The process is similar but different. Uh, I am going to create a new configuration in the, in the assembly. Okay, so add configuration. We'll call this my section cut. And in that section cut, we're going to go ahead and. Uh, open a sketch and create uh, wherever that cut is going to be and let me go normal to this so we get something that looks correct so we're going to cut right through the entire thing now what I really want to do in this case is only cut through the uh, the housing uh, some of the components so when I go ahead and uh, actually do my cut we'll do extruded cut through all in the extruded cut dialog for an assembly feature, um, I have the ability at the bottom to use what we call feature scope. Feature scope says, you know what, I need to select which components that I'm actually going to cut away. In this case, I want to cut away the housing, and I want to cut away the bear, the outside of the bearing, and the retaining clip, and everything that's left uh, will stay whole. Okay, so that allows me to see inside. Now when I go ahead and make a drawing from this, from the assembly, uh, I'm able to create a model view, again isometric probably. In this case there's my isometric with the section. I can use my, my uh, rotate drawing view to give me exactly what I want here. And when I accept it, that view will be there. Again, you will have to add your cross hatching uh, to get your assembly cutaway information as well. Okay. So continuing on the whole drawing view creation uh, and its options, uh, those are those are two areas that we we might want to focus here. Uh, continuing, uh, let's see here. The uh, view property dialog. Uh, I think I might save this to the end just because of the amount of time. I want to show you some of the manipulation features uh, that we're looking at. Just a real quick uh, bit of information on first angle versus third angle projection. You can find it by right-clicking on the sheet and drawing sheet properties. You have the option between first angle and third angle projection. Third angle projection is typically used here in the States with first angle projection being a European standard. It just has to do with where it places and how it sees what is the plan view or top view and right view versus uh, you know fronts. Uh, and there's just a couple examples of that. But let me show you where that's stored. Uh, inside a drawing, if you right click on the sheet, you have sheet properties. Here's where your first angle and third angle projection is stored. What you're going to want to check is to make sure all your templates have these set up properly. If they're set up properly, uh, you're going to have the ability to you know, really not have to worry about this at all, always be set 
uh, as you would expect with the top being on top, the right being on right, the bottom being on the bottom. And it'll allow you to, to, to kind of ignore that. Moving drawing views. Uh, in order to move drawing views, you have a couple different options. You can click and drag on any entity. You can select the drawing view, then nudge it with the arrow keys. You can press Alt to place the pointer anywhere in the view or move it over the boundary. So let's look at that for a moment. If I wanted to move this view, if I select on an entity and just drag, I'm actually moving the view. However, if I just click within the border of the view and try to drag, it doesn't. So I actually have to select an entity. One of the other options is to hold down Alt. If I hold down Alt, anywhere in the drawing view I can select will allow me to drag. Notice when I hold down Alt and I'm in a view, the pan command turns on. I can also select the drawing view border. If I select the border, that's what a lot of people are probably using uh, to be able to move a view. And the last thing I want to point out is your arrow keys on your keyboard. And you can might be able to see this in your GoToMeeting. If I hold them down, I'm actually uh, manipulating the movements for that. That is actually found in your tools options under drawings at the very bottom, uh, which is your keyboard movement increment. I can make this say five millimeters, and every time I hit the keyboard, it will move five millimeters. Okay. So moving, uh, moving drawing views pretty simple. Aligning drawing views. A couple notes I have here. Alignment is automatic for for standard three view section view, align section, auxiliary views, and projected views. I've already introduced you to the ability to hold down the control key as you preview to override it. Uh, broken views respect the alignment of the view before it was broken. So you saw me create the break view. If that's aligned to something else that uh, has a different scale and the alignment's different than you would expect and you break it, what you're getting in that break view should be the same alignment as what you had ahead of time. Okay, uh, Child views always move relative to parent views. So the child view is going to move away from the parents. To retain exact positions between the views, press shift while dragging. And then to lock it, your lock view position. I'm going to show that as well. So if I wanted to maintain the position of these three views relative to each other, I can select all three, hold down shift, and move the views, and they will all move relative to each other. If there's a particular view I didn't want to ever move, or in this case move for a period of time, if I right-click on it, I can lock the view position. Okay, You notice I'm not able to grab or move that particular view. Now, most of you online probably have had a, a situation where you have had notes that you've added next to a view, and the view moves, and then you've got to move your notes. Well, if you lock your views, your notes are there. You, know, you shouldn't have any kind of that movement. So get things in position and maybe lock them down. This may uh, may help you, but also teach your coworkers uh, that they have the ability to unlock those and and uh, and move forward with that. Uh, 3D drawing views. I I showed you that tool, uh, the ability to rotate the drawing view and actually keep it. A uh, little note in here: it's not available for detail views, broken views, crop views, empty views, or detached views. Again, I will have this PowerPoint presentation. If anyone wants, and wants it, uh, you can request this after the uh, webinar here. Now, how about rotating views? Now, we're, we're talking about rotating it relative to the, uh, the screen. So let's, let's take a look here, and let's use a different drawing because it's kind of boring. Somebody asked, how do you bring up recent documents? And that's the R key on the keyboard. So let's go back to a, here's a pretty busy document with with quite a bit going on here so if I wanted to rotate a view on the screen for instance uh, this uh, top left hand view here give it a second to bring itself right up 
uh, really my two options are to select my uh, rotate command on the view toolbar or to right click on the view and go to zoom pan rotate and select rotate view now when I'm in this command I have a little bit of more control over what how it's rotated first of all if I hold down my right mouse button or select I'm sorry the arrow right mouse arrow it will actually move based upon the increments set in my SOLIDWORKS options which happen to be 15 degree increments you can see that I can rotate it forward and back at any point if I wanted to use my left mouse button I could in the graphics area rotate it and it will snap at 45s but I could really try to get it at any angle you can see there's two decimal places and it would it'd probably be a little bit tougher to get an exact uh, exact angle in between 45s or I could come in here and specify a drawing view angle like 45 degrees now two other things I want to point out that are very important with the ability to rotate views do I want any dependent views to also update the change in orientation and do I want to rotate the center marks with the view uh, why they even had to ask this question is beyond me so why would I not want to rotate the center marks I have no clue uh, but the dependent views do I want those to change if I say apply any views associated with that that are dependent in this case this is just an offshoot it's a child uh, it does not affect it but if there was a parent it will actually uh, modify those dependent views as well so we do have a few different ways of rotating those drawing views um, you know this this really becomes a very simple conversation can I copy drawing views you can cut copy and paste drawing views from one sheet to another in the same drawing or from one drawing to another you may or may not have tried that you may want to add your cut copy paste to your standard toolbar that's just tools customize couple other notes that I put in here model views are usually the most useful to copy because you can modify them and display any orientation I showed you that I can grab a model view and switch it to any orientation okay you can also drag views from sheet to sheet now that's a drag in the feature tree if you want to do this on multiple views at once just hold down control so it becomes very simple to uh, make copies of views. If I wanted this view on another sheet, Control C, or I select Copy, or Cut, I could go to another sheet, and Control V will allow me to pay, paste it. Well, that didn't allow me to do it. Uh, that's because I just did the section. Let's just. Uh, drag something from sheet one to sheet two now the drag uh, occurs when the sheet is that you're dragging to is inactive so if I wanted let's see what has a non-dependent view if I drag this view uh, right in the tree to sheet two you can see it now shows up at sheet two if I right click the sheet that's how we activate and you can see that the view now exists on that other sheet just wanted to be clear here that this you are capable of doing a lot of these things another big conversation and I think we we're going to run out of the time a little bit in this webinar I may want to uh, expand on some of these topics a little bit but the ability to manipulate drawing views goes well beyond the creation of the drawing view but the ability to hide and show views hide and show edges hide and show sketches Okay, uh, showing hidden lines. A lot of this is is uh, within the software, and I even found one that I didn't even know existed. There's one in here called Hide Components Behind a Plane, and, and it's just uh, it's surprising that you know there's that much in there that uh, we can take a look at. Let's let's grab this one here. so let's say we wanted to hide an individual component in this view I could right click on the component right in the view okay and notice there's a section for component in there you'll find a show hide which allows me to hide the component 
If this is a multi-body part that I'm looking at, I can also hide the body, which it happens to be, and then hide behind plane, which I'm going to show you here in a second. So if I say hide component, you can see the entire component, which is the welded frame, now disappears. If I go to the properties of the view, and this is one part we had to skip over for time, you're going to see three tabs in there related to hiding things in views. Hiding components, hiding bodies, or hiding edges. If I've hidden anything in that view, it will be listed in the hide show components. If I want to bring it back to the view, I just select it and delete it, and that will bring it back to the view. If there's a body I want to hide, I can select the body individually and apply that, and that individual body will now be hidden. If I want it back, I delete it out of the view, and the body will come back. Okay. If I want to do uh, hide and showing edges, now this requires me to be able to make selections of edges, uh, and this, you know, using this technique, it's picking the entire weldment. So I would want to start by canceling out of that. I want to bring up a toolbar called Line Format. On the Line Format is a command called Hide Show Edges. I'm just going to make this actually a wireframe here so we can uh, let's hit and remove. There we go. So let's zoom in here. If I select a, a series of edges, maybe I didn't want whatever this is hanging out here to show in this particular view. I can select the edges, and there's a hide show edges. It's a toggle that will hide those particular edges. I want to point out, just as the others, if I go to the drawing view properties and I go to the show hidden edges, uh, in this particular case, it does not show here because uh, this is not, uh, it's a little bit different technique uh, here than what we're using. Um, if I turn off that command uh, or select that command once again, uh, notice it does show me uh, the hidden edges uh, graphically that I have for that particular view. If I want to show them again, uh, left mouse toggles them and right mouse actually accepts the command. So I could bring them back by left mouse clicking on them, uh, which is essentially performing a show. And there's some filters here for tangent edges and edges shorter than a certain size. I mean, this really goes to a high level when it comes to uh, manipulation of, of data within the drawing view. Uh, it really does. Now, I want to show you hide behind plane because I, I just I, there's definitely a use for this. Let's say I sec selected a face within the model in this isometric view. And I didn't want any of the components on the other side of that face to show up in this view. If I right-click on it, okay, we have Show Hide, and there's an option to hide behind plane. We can even specify the distance from that plane or a direction. And if I say OK to this, anything behind that will be hidden. Let me do a 3D drawing view so we can get a perspective of what happened here. Now, anything crossing it is still there. Anything behind it is now gone. Now, you can also do this in the feature tree. If you go to a particular view, and let's say a front plane, you can right-click on that, and there's your hide behind plane. Honestly, I've never seen this in any documentation. It's in the help, but any what's new or any of that, I've never seen a command called hide behind plane. Uh, so I actually learned of this recently. Uh, display states, we'll have to talk about that another time. Uh, last thing before we close, uh, drawing view display. Most people don't know about this line fa format toolbar that I brought up and the fact that you can change line color, line thickness, line style, and layer properties uh, from this toolbar. So using this particular uh, drawing, uh, let's say there was a certain set of lines I wanted to highlight uh, in this view to, to accentuate some particular topic. 
Using the line format toolbar, I have choices. First of all, line color, where I can specify the, the color of the lines. Okay. And that should uh, do that. And if I click off, you'll notice that they do show up in the color I specified. If I want to change the thickness of the line, I can select line thickness and give it a, a little bit thicker line. Again, uh, trying to accentuate a particular component. If I wanted to change the line style, I can click the line, and maybe I want to show up as a stitch line. I can do that, and it shows up as a stitch line. Okay, if I wanted to create and modify layers, here's where the layer dialog is, and a lot of you uh, should know at this point what the layer dialog uh, does. So this line format toolbar uh, has some, some tools in it uh, that will help you. Now the only thing I really didn't cover, and I know I just shot a ton of information at you real fast, is drawing view properties. I went in there and showed you show hidden edges or hide show components or hide show bodies, but under the main window is properties related to that drawing view. There's a couple areas that are just read only. That's the model information and where the document's stored. And the view information, which tells you which drawing number and the type of view that it is. But also in here, is an area for you to pick the configuration you want to use. If you want to show it in the exploded state, so if you have an explode in the assembly, this is where you turn it on. And then we talked about display states. Here I have different display states. Maybe uh, I want to show one of those display states by going to my properties. It really has to do, it's almost like configuration, but it's just for visualization of the assembly. If I have balloons in this view, which table, which bill of material table are they linked to? Now, some of this stuff is for sheet metal. I want to point out a few of them. Displaying your bend notes, bend up, bend down, and the angles. I can turn that on and off through this properties. Display bounding box, again, is for sheet metal, which shows you the blank size around the sheet metal flat pattern. Showing the fixed face is also for sheet metal, which will actually highlight the face that was fixed uh, when you flattened the, the sheet metal part. And then under the flatten uh, feature, you can specify grain direction. This will actually allow you to turn on and off that grain direction note. Now, I know I just shot a lot at you. I, uh, I have a few questions here, and we'll, we'll answer those up. Um, if you want the PowerPoint, send me an email at kevin at caddimensions.com, and uh, I can shoot you over the PowerPoint. Uh, first thing uh, we have for questions, uh, it's more of a note here. It says, uh, is there a way to make the view generated from the detail view circle in a dashed line format? Um, I will have to look at that. Well, I think the attached view... Uh, you're talking, okay, the circle itself. Uh, I'd have to look through the different standards to see, and I will do that before we shut down here. It would be good to mention, can control break view lines with dimensions? Yes, the uh, when you do break a view, you can use dimensions to control the distance uh, between those lines uh, of the break view. So something we kind of overlooked. With predefined views, does it auto scale? Uh, predefined views are set to a particular scale. Um, it will, will it auto scale? That's a good question. I, I don't think so. I think it scales to whatever the scale is set uh, for the uh, predefined view. Uh, I think if you leave it to sheet scale, though, it should auto size. So that's something I would want to try. So if you leave it, instead of making the views uh, custom scale, if you say use sheet scale, uh, I think that should get you to that point. Uh, how do you bring up recent documents? That's R on your keyboard. And can you explain foreshortened dimensions? 
Also, a possible best practice for showing dimensions in a detailed view from a parent as in a reference length or a diameter. Now, foreshortened dimensions are uh, dimensions that are created on views that are, are uh, broken um, where it can't project or it, the true dimension uh, isn't really on that particular view because the, the view's been uh, created or shortened up. Um, these foreshortened dimensions are, are created automatically in most cases. Uh, however, you can uh, create and turn a dimension into foreshortened dimensions. Now let's just, uh, since this is a topic here, let's go here. Where would I go to find that information, right? Let's, let's use our help for a moment. Foreshortened. Let's see if there even is a topic in here. Now there is a, a nice uh, help in the uh, in a nice bit of help in here that helps us to understand a little better uh, what a foreshortened dimension is. Okay, so basically the line is not full distance and it's it's shortened and broken to let you know that uh, uh, you know that full dimension is not available. Here's an example of a detail view where the full diameter. Uh, would typically be showing, but you're not going to show that pointing to some area, you know, off the off the space of the view. Uh, so you create a foreshortened dimension that shows that that's kind of going off into into space for that matter. Okay, um, that's all I had for today. I hope. Even with the amount of information, I think I learned that I probably need to break this into two sessions. I didn't realize how much was there. But hopefully everyone got a little something out of it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please send me an email at kevin at caddimensions.com. And uh, later in the month, we're going to go through uh, annotation creation in the options. Uh, I probably will break that down, so we we'll, might have 